Good afternoon. Hopefully you can hear me. I had myself on mute. Um, again, welcome everyone. I just want to tell you a little bit about the Southern Connecticut Black Chamber. We are a business networking organization. We serve small minority and women-owned businesses in the greater Bridgeport communities from providing educational and informational workshops to free access to bids to MBE certification. Our group is, we are dedicated to creating a level playing field when it comes to providing the same opportunities and resources for our minority and women-owned businesses as their counterparts. Um, if anybody is interested in learning more about the chamber, I will have our information in the chat box. So please feel free to jot it down and either send me an email or give me a phone call and um, we can take it from there. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very, very much, Diana. And thank you so much for the sponsorship of the Southern Connecticut Black Chamber of Commerce. Our speakers today are Meg Yetishevsky and Meredith Glasgow from the Connecticut Apex Accelerator. This was formerly the Con Connecticut Procurement Technical Assistance Program. More on our speakers in just a minute. First, some brief information on SCORE. SCORE has 230 offices and 10,000 volunteers nationwide. SCORE is a part of the Small Business Administration. Within Fairfield County, SCORE has 100 plus volunteers with a wide range of industry, process, and subject matter expertise. We offer three primary value-added services to small business owners. Number one, free one-on-one -on -one counseling, which can be accessed via the request mentor link on our website or via the link on the screen. Number two, educational in-person workshops and live webinars, about a hundred per year locally, and very extensive resources on our website, including a network of subject matter experts at your disposal. Some useful information about today's event. If you have a question, we will take questions at the end. Please use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen to put your question in and we will moderate the answers at the end of the session. Our workshop will end at 1 p.m. to respect your time. The session is being recorded and the link to the recording will be available at fairfieldcounty.score.org within the next couple of days. Now our speaker. Meg is the manager of procurement programs at the Connecticut Department of Administrative Services. Meg manages the Small Minority Business Certification Program and the Construction Pre-Qualification Program. The small business programs serve as the primary liaisons for Connecticut small businesses seeking procurement opportunities with the state of Connecticut and the private sector market. The mission of the small business program is to facilitate economic development for our state's small businesses and minority businesses by recruiting, certifying, and connecting them with that marketplace. Meg brings over 25 years of experience with the small business program, which has become a symbol of integrated diversity in the procurement process. Meredith is, from, is a Nashville, Tennessee native who recently moved to New England. She studied at the University of Mississippi and graduated with her BS in marketing. She also had the opportunity to study international business in Ireland. She has a diverse business background, including work as an account manager and has experience with customer service, team leadership, shipping and receiving, parts manufacturing, purchasing and procurement for government contracts, event organization and budgeting. Meredith is a procurement specialist at the Accelerator. I'm now very pleased to turn over the presentation to Meg and Meredith. It's all yours. Thank you so much for that introduction, Peter. And we're very glad to be here to take a part of this webinar. Again, thank you so much for joining this presentation. It'll be getting government contracts in the state of Connecticut. I do want to mention again that my name is Meredith Glasgow. I'm a procurement specialist with the Connecticut Apex Accelerator or CT Apex. And our program is funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the Department of Defense, 
with matching funds provided through Connecticut's Department of Economic and Community Development, or DECD, and our host agency is the Southeastern Connecticut Enterprise Region, or SECTOR. I'm also joined today by Meg Yedishevsky with the CTDAS, as Peter said, and she'll be adding more details later on about the um, benefits of contracting and doing business with Connecticut. This webinar was made possible by SCORE and their generous sponsors. For more information about SCORE services and resources, please visit their website at the bottom of this slide. I thank you very much again for this opportunity to collaborate with both the Fairfield County SCORE and the Southern Connecticut Black Chamber of Commerce. CTAPEX provides assistance in education in regards to the perplexity of government contracting including assisting with federal, state, and local registrations and certifications. This includes socioeconomic certifications, such as a small business certification. We also can assist with researching procurement histories, identifying bid opportunities, preparing proposals, one-on-one -on -one counseling, creating government-friendly capability statements, and bid matching. Connecticut Apex has seven office locations throughout Connecticut, which includes Hartford, East Hartford, Rocky Hill, Milford, and our headquarters is located in Groton. I encourage you to follow us at CT Apex on social media, including Facebook and LinkedIn, in addition to registering at ctptac.org, where you can sign up for government contracting assistance and access to our learning library. Our agenda today will begin with discussing the difference between federal versus state contracting. Then we'll get into doing business with the state of Connecticut, certification options, both in the federal space and the state space, eligibility requirements for these certifications, getting started with the application process, and we'll end today with our key takeaways. As Peter stated, if you have any questions during the presentation, please put them in the Q&A box and we'll be answering those at the end. So I want to start out with federal contracting. One of the first systems you're going to hear about is SAM.gov, which stands for System for Award Management. SAM.gov is the first step in the government contracting and is a requirement to receive any federal contracts, certifications, or financial assistance. This system will also determine your small business status as designated by the Small Business Administration, or SBA, and this will be relevant for small business certifications. So the small business status will be dependent on your NAICS code. NAICS code stands for North American Industry Classification System. Those codes are six digit codes that indicate what products or services you are looking to offer the government. Each code has a different size standard affiliated and that will determine your size based on annual revenue or number of employees. We'll discuss this more later, how to determine your size status. And on the state side, you will want to be familiar with Connecticut's contracting system, which is called CT Source. This is where all Connecticut contract opportunities are housed. And these opportunities are managed by the Connecticut Department of Administrative Services. I've included the links on this slide to find resources for both federal and state contracting. To start doing business with the state of Connecticut, you'll first want to register to be a Connecticut supplier. At the top of this page, you can see the link to sign up in CT Source as a Connecticut supplier. Once you um, register, you'll start receiving notifications for relevant contract opportunities as they're posted. I want to mention there's two places where these opportunities are housed. One of them is called the Bid Board, and that's for open opportunities that have not yet been fulfilled. Those are open for bid, and you can see the link there. To find those opportunities, we won't be using the NAICS codes to search. Instead, we'll be using keywords and filters to find opportunities. To find current opportunities that have already been awarded and are being worked on or closed opportunities, 
Those will be housed in the contract board instead of the bid board. Both of those links are included on this slide. Certification options in the federal space are all managed by the Small Business Administration or the SBA and will all require a SAM.gov active profile in order to apply. All of these small business certifications will also need to be determined through your small business status. So you'll need to make sure you understand your NAICS code. On the state side, there are two options for certifications. The first one is the Small Slash Minority Business Enterprise or SMBE program. This is managed by DAS. The second option is the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise or DBE program. And this is managed by the, the Connecticut Department of Transportation. Eligibility requirements for these certifications, you must have a SAM.gov active registration, the SBA small business size based on your primary NAICS code. So circling back around to that, you can see at the bottom, I have two screenshots of charts to give you an example of two different kinds of NAICS codes. The top one will use 236115 as an example. The title of that NAICS code is New Single Family Housing Construction. And you can see the size standard for this NAICS code is $45 million annually. That means as long as you make $45 million annually, and this is your primary service, when you get registered in SAM, you will be recognized as a small business. The SBA will automatically include you in their database, and then you will be eligible for applying for those certifications. At the bottom, you can see the NAICS code 211120, the title being crude petroleum extraction. And this size standard is based on number of employees. So as long as you have um, 1,250 employees or less, you will be considered a small business here. And that is based on an average of the last 12 months for your number of employees. The other eligibility requirements are typically that you must be a for-profit business, but I encourage you to look closely at the eligibility requirements for each certification because that's not always the case. 51% or more, the direct owner must be controlling the entity directly. The eligibility for the small business enterprise in Connecticut are as follows. You must have your principal place of business in Connecticut. You must be registered and recognized as a small business based on your NAICS code that we just discussed and registered fully in SAM.gov. If you're not sure if you have an, a fully active registration, please feel free to reach out to Connecticut Apex and we would be happy to verify. At the bottom, you can see any nonprofit corporation is also eligible for this kind of certification. So you don't have to be just a for-profit business. For the minority business enterprise piece, this is the second half of the small and minority business enterprise certification with the state of Connecticut. If you also want to be considered for the minority business enterprise, you will also need 51% of the capital stock or assets must be a person with a minority status. If you're not sure how minority is defined, please reach out and we would be happy to help you with that as well. Then when you're getting started to apply, you'll need to prepare some required documents. I've included the link, but we're also going to hear from Meg Yedashevsky on what documents may apply for your business type. The application is housed in a system called BizNet. You will need to create an account through the link, click on doing business with the state, then on supplier diversity application. Then once you have logged in, you can click on the initial certification application button, and that will get you started to start filling out the forms. 
I want to mention that you will need your federal unique entity ID from SAM.gov and it needs to be assigned and registered before you can submit your application. It will be needed on the BizNet side. The key takeaways for you to keep in mind from my part of the information will be you must be fully registered and activated in SAM.gov and to be eligible to work with the federal government or to receive certain certifications. Your NAICS code is important for determining what you are offering the government and what size standards will apply to you. Holding certifications can benefit you greatly as a contractor by making set aside contracts now available for you. And lastly, Connecticut APEX can assist you with any of these processes at no cost if questions or concerns arise. Meg, I'm now going to pass it over to you to go into more details about getting started on the application. Thank you, Meredith. Can you? Uh, I'm assuming everyone can hear me. Um, and thank you very much. Um, I'm going to talk to you uh, the, all about the certification for the state of Connecticut. Meredith, Meredith, you did a great job in kind of 10,000 feet, kind of letting everybody know some of the things that you have to do. I think you'll saw by you see by the takeaways that there's there's several different types of certifications, and you as a small business owner have to navigate those because each one is important in its own right, uh, depending on what type of products and services and, and who you're selling to. Um, and um, Meredith's organization is a great uh, resource for you to navigate those. So I know we're giving you a lot of information today. Um, yes, the, the, the you know, you're going to have the slides, you're going to have the detailed backing of this. And most importantly, you'll have Meredith's um, contact information and you will have my contact information. So know that moving forward, um, you will have that. Um, I want to talk to you very briefly about the supplier diversity program at the state of Connecticut. Um, you'll hear supplier diversity. What is our mission? You know, I, I tell people all the time, our mission is to diversify the suppliers that we do business with here at the state of Connecticut. So that's our primary, primary mission. Um, we travel around the state of Connecticut. The team travels around to try to get as many companies such as yourselves um, introduced to the state of Connecticut as a client. Um, in doing so, Meredith told you a little bit about um, some of our portals and some things you have to register for. And those are great for you to register because then you can see what's happening, right? You can say, oh, I didn't realize the state of Connecticut has a contract for you know, graphic design, or I didn't realize there's a bid out there for landscaping. And all those things will be afforded to you as you register for some of these portals. Um, we actively recruit and certify different companies because one of the things we want to do is have as many companies certified in the state of Connecticut's small or small minority owned business program as Connecticut based certified businesses because um, there's opportunities for you with that certification. So the state of Connecticut goes out to procure for everything. And so we certify so many different types of companies. It's not just the bricks and mortar. For years, it was, you know, we're certifying the trades. We're certifying um, companies that are doing bricks and mortar because we're building buildings. Well, remember, the state of Connecticut purchases everything. So we purchase graphic design um, services, accounting services, um, pasta sauce. Um, you know, food. There's nothing that I'm sure there's companies on this call that are thinking, hmm, I'm not sure if the state of Connecticut would be a good client for me. I will tell you, we will. Um, we purchase everything, whether as a prime contractor or a subcontractor. And you getting certified as a Connecticut based small or small minority owned business would have added advantages um, to, to that. Um, so, I would encourage you to, to do that. Um, let 
We talked a little bit about CT source in the previous slides with Meredith. And she said, listen, if you wanna do business with the state of Connecticut, you need to be registered with what we call CT source. Um, that's our portal, right? Every state, if you are working with other states, you know other states have different portals. If you're working at the municipal level, you know they have their portal where they, they, they vet and post certain things. This is the state of Connecticut's portal. It's open 24 hours a day. You can look at any point in time to see what type of bids we have out there, whether it's through the state of Connecticut or the 169 municipalities as well post on our bid board. So you'll have an opportunity to look to see what's out there. Um, you can register as a supplier, as Meredith mentioned earlier. The first step for you to do is, hey, I wanna register. So let me go to the CT source registration. There's tutorials and, and guides on how to do it. It's fairly intuitive. Um, it's similar to registering at any federal level or any, any other type of program where it's gonna ask you for some general information about your company. And then it's gonna ask you, what do you wanna be notified on, right? And you can you can narrow your, your, your um, opportunities. If you only wanna receive bids in certain areas, you can do that. Um, and then you can also look to see what contracts the state of Connecticut has out there currently. We have thousands of contracts and all those contracts have terms uh, that are three-year terms normally, um, they're three years. So you can look to see when is this contract coming up for renewal? And you as a business owner can be fairly proactive to say, okay, I wanna make sure I, I don't miss out on that next time it comes out, right? So you can look, everything we do is open and transparent. You can look to see who's on that contract, what are we paying, what's it for? So again, kind of getting proactive and looking to see where we're at. So the takeaway for any businesses that are on this call, I would say is first step, Connecticut, go register on this portal. It's free and now you're in the know, right? Um, Meredith talked a little bit about different portals. CT Source was one. Now this is what we call our BizNet portal. If you are looking to get certified as a Connecticut small business, we have a different registration and that's called BizNet. So you, you as business owners are gonna learn all these acronyms, but you wanna log in and you wanna create account for this particular um, software called BizNet. And then you'll have access to fill out the online application to be registered as a small business. This is simply a visual for you as a business owner to say, oh, I remember this in Meg's presentation and I'm in the right spot. But again, we're going to guide you through that. If any of you are interested in anything we speak of today, we're going to get you connected with someone that will help you. But this is another um, login that you would have to do in order to get access to getting registered as a Connecticut small business. I mentioned our application. Everything is, is paperless, okay? It's a, it's, it's a web web application to be certified as a Connecticut small business. Nothing is... Um, uh, nothing is paper. Um, you do need a BizNet account, as I mentioned. Um, and the reason is that is because we you're going to provide some documents to us that are um, are, are secure, right? You're going to go through a BizNet account that's a secure site. Everything is encrypted. You're going to have to upload some certain documents that are corporate documents, financial documents, and we want to make sure that that's secure. And you as a business owner, will grant access to anybody in your organization that you want to have access to that. The other beauty thing is that being online and being web-based, everything is instant. So when you complete your online application, as many of your small businesses will do in the middle of the night, because I don't think any small business owner sleeps, because I look at some of the times these applications are submitted and it's crazy times, but that's when you have time to do your paperwork. So is immediately when you go online and you fill out this online application and you hit submit, you go into an online queue. How do we review them internally? First in, first out, right? So, um, you know, it's down, it's down to that. Unless you have an opportunity, clearly we're going to try to prioritize and process that application quickly because we, we don't want you to miss out on that opportunity. Um, but again, paperless goes into the queue. Um, most importantly, you have to be Connecticut based. Um, you're, you know, I'm sure many of you have been certified or looking at other certifications. Connecticut is fairly unique. 
you must maintain your principal place in Connecticut. And that doesn't mean all your sales is in Connecticut, but you're out of Florida, or that doesn't mean you have a trailer on a, on a project for three years. No, your principal place, your corporate office has to be here in Connecticut. And there's some checks and balances that we do as part of that application review to validate that, okay? Um, and we're fairly unique in that. Um, it is economic development for Connecticut-based businesses. Um, you must be registered in the SAM federal system. Uh, Meredith spoke about that. And I can't stress enough that any company that wants to be Connecticut certified as a small business must be re fully registered in the SAM system first. And that takes some time. So forecast out, make sure you're working with um, organizations that can help you with that process. And why is that important? It's important because you cannot complete the state of Connecticut's application until you are registered at the federal level. Because for many years, um, the state of Connecticut defined a small business across the board as any company that was located in Connecticut and that had gross revenue of $20 million or less. Um, we considered it a small business, um, regardless whether you were a construction company, a dry cleaner, a pasta sauce maker. Well, um, that changed uh, almost um, two years ago through legislation. And the legislation decided that said, listen, the federal government has a whole unit that sets these size standards for small business. And as you saw previously in the slide, that Meredith shared with you is it depends, right? You could be a landscaper and it could be based on your revenue or you could be a manufacturer and it could be based on your number of employees. It's truly based on your industry and there's anecdotal data that supports that. So the state of Connecticut is using those NAICS codes or those size standards that you are um, validated when you go through the federal side to get certified with them or registered with them. So we carry that over to our program. And it, it makes more sense because now, um, you know, it, it depends on your industry, right? So I can't stress enough that please note, you have to be fully registered in the federal system and get that NAICS code that says, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm good as a small business because that will carry over to the state system. Again, minority owned business, um, you have to be Connecticut based. You're gonna be registered in the federal system. And then we're gonna take a deeper dive, right? We're gonna take a deeper dive into the ownership of the, these companies that are applying to us and saying, who owns it, who operates it, um, who has the power to direct that business, who, who has the expertise in whatever it is that that company is providing. And we do this in a number of different ways. Um, we do it through documentation in the application, and we also do it with, we come out to the businesses. And um, that's where we, we, we enjoy that because we're coming out to the business to say, tell us how this, the company operates, right? Take us through a day. Um, and we learn about the company, not only for certification purposes, but hopefully to connect you with some more opportunities, right? Because we're learning more about the business. Um, so there's there's definitely that checks and balances and that's part of the application review. So it's not simply ownership, it's ownership and all these other points in, of reference that, that we will validate as part of that application process. Um, for certification purposes, um, business owner or structure, it doesn't matter, right? You can be a sole proprietor, uh, LLC, a corporation. You can be a nonprofit in the state of Connecticut system to get certified. Um, so depending on your type of business structure, when you fill out the application, the application kind of thinks it's intuitive and it says, okay, company XYZ on page one of the application told me that they were a corporation. So at the end of the application, it's going to ask you to submit or upload documents related to the corporation, right? We'll ask you for bylaws. We're going to ask you for um, when you filed your annual filings with Connecticut Secretary of State, depending on, you know, whatever type of structure we may ask you for a partnership agreement. But the takeaway is it doesn't matter what type of structure you are. Just know that depending on this type of structure, that's going to promulgate what type of documents we're going to ask you for. 
And again, going back to why we want it to be a secure site and have you create a login and do all those things is because we, we understand that the documents you're gonna submit, you wanna make sure they're secure. So, so know that. Um, I will tell you, um, marketing opportunities is, is probably the most important thing. I would stress that anybody thinking, I don't know if I wanna do this, I don't know if I wanna fill out this application, um, you sh marketing opportunities, right? Um, I, I will tell you it's free. I would get that in the next slide, but there's no cost to you to do this. Obviously it takes your time, but you can market yourself as a Connecticut based certified small or small minority owned business. Now that has added advantages if we're putting some bids out on that portal that you're all going to register for, and they may you may see some opportunities there that are set aside, meaning only companies that hold this type of certification can participate. So at the end of the day, we know that contract's going to go to a Connecticut small business. But you also may need this for uh, private entities. Any of you doing business with any of the private industries, um, you being certified in your home state has added advantage. And I can give you several, several, several um, examples of companies that have had success because they had their Connecticut home certification. In addition to as immediately um, every, I think it's twice a day, we update our directory. So you'll see here that we have an online directory of all the businesses that are certified. Currently we have about 3,500 companies certified in all different types of commodities and services. Um, companies come to this directory to use this, to find you, right? So if nothing else, you go out on our, what we call yellow pages, almost like of all the companies that are certified. All the state agencies come here to look at this. I can tell you many private industries use this um, as well. So um, you would come out here and it is it is updated twice a day. So we try to keep it as current as, as we can. Um, you'll see that once you get on our directory and are certified, people can find you, right? So they can say, oh, okay, this company um, is located in New Britain. Let me view their certification. You can you can view that if you ever if you as a business owner ever needed that to include in a bid, you can do that. Um, and it, you know it's an opportunity for companies to find out a little bit about you. They can drill down and go to your website and. Most importantly, they can see, oh, I'm cert this company is certified as a small business or a minority owned business where the majority owner is, is Black American. So we try to put as much information out on the directory as we can, right? So people can utilize and find these companies. There's no cost. There's no cost. There's no cost. Um, your certification is good for two years. Um, when your certificate is up for renewal, you're gonna get emails from us. So, cause we know you have many other things to worry about, but I will tell you this has to be important because if you get a contract, because you have this certification, you need to maintain that certification and you'll be breach of that contract, right? So we send you emails 120 days before your certificate is gonna expire 90, 60 and 30. So we're reminding you several times to get back in here and get your certification. And the recertification um, will maintain all your information that you put in before. That's the beauty of um, having it online, right? It saves your data, um, but we still have to validate that nothing has changed you know, with ownership, with um, the involvement of the majority owner and all those things. So we do look at that. Um, so know that, okay? Um, let me just go back previous. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention too is many of you are saying, oh, well, okay, this sounds good. I can do this. I'm gonna fill out the application. Um, how does this affect the state of Connecticut and the agencies? Because I know that the state of Connecticut has a lot of state agencies. And um, I will tell you that every state agency that has a budget of more than $10,000, which is most of the agencies, um, um, they have to set aside a percentage of their annual spend with certified small and small minority owned businesses. It, there's a statute, um, 4A-60G, that says that, right? And so I tell that to you because we, my office monitors that. Um, agencies are um, 
excited about doing business with small businesses located here. Um, all the different agencies have various spend and you're going to have different opportunities at, you know, um, the Department of Medical Examiners versus Department of Ag, right? So it runs the gamut of different types of bids that you'll see out there. And you'll see some opportunities that are set aside for small minority owned businesses. And or you may see an opportunity that um, provides some priority or preference, whatever the term that you want to use for companies that hold these types of certifications. Um, so Again, letting you know that that's that's a benefit um, to be considered as a state of Connecticut small or small minority owned business through this certain application process. Um, respectful of time, um, here's my contact information, um, email, um, you know, I, Everything we do is electronic, as you guys probably all know now. We push you to the website. There's our website. Um, but th this is this is the first of the journey. So if it's something that you're sitting there saying, I want to explore this, um, shoot me an email and we will get you connected with a staff member who will take it from there and kind of get you started. Um, know that that journey will include Meredith's organization because the very first thing is, remember, you have to be registered at the federal level, and they're the expertise to get you through that. Once you get through that, then you come to us um, and, and, get, um, and get registered. Any of you that are on the call today that may be currently certified with us and will be coming up for renewal, um, if you have not done the new process, you will be held to that new process of being registered at the federal level. So um, plan accordingly. Um, I, I know we have a lot of questions, so I think those are more important. Thanks. Thank you very much, um, Meg, and thank you very much, Meredith. Um, we will get to the questions in just a moment. Uh, if you have a question for our speakers, please send it to us via the, um, the Q&A um, button at the bottom. Um, Meg, I would ask that you could put your chart back up with your contact information. Absolutely. Uh, leave leave sure. it up on the screen. Sure, will do. So um, before we get to the questions, could you just repeat the, the first three steps that our listeners need to think about if they want to get government contracting? Um, what are the first three steps that they should take? Uh, sure, I'll take a stab at that and then I'll turn it to Meredith. But I will tell you that the first first three steps would be registering in CT source so that you now are registered in the portal that will give you knowledge of what opportunities are out there because you will then have access to review the bids that are going out. You will also have access to do some due diligence as a business owner to see what contracts we already have. Um, so that would be the step one. S step two, would be to register in the SAM federal system. Um, and then step three would be to register as a Connecticut small minority owned businesses. Those three steps would, would help you tremendously. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as you said, we have lots of questions and we'll get to one after another. Um, so let me start off um, with a, a question uh, via the chat. Um, are all the organizational documents from the prior registration system maintained, transferred, and accessible to BizNet? Yes. The answer for the State of Connecticut certification is yes. Once you upload something to your application, it is retained and accessible um, for your, your next recertification. Okay, thank you. Our next question is, the federal SAM registration is asking for a $495 fee. Is that accurate? Or maybe they stumbled on a website that is not a valid US federal government website. Is there a registration fee for registering on federal SAM? Thank you so much for whoever asked that question. The answer is absolutely no. Please do not pay a fee to register in SAM.gov. 
It's absolutely free. It is free. I do want to mention that there are a lot of commercial companies out there. If you just Google Sam, that will start popping up saying that they can assist you with this registration, but they're going to ask you for a fee. If you would like assistance with this for free at no cost, please feel free to reach out to me or our program here at Connecticut Apex. We can help you with the entire process at no cost. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the next question is, um, can a vendor from another state open a local branch in Connecticut to get access to contracts? So you don't need to be, um, the, I think the disconnect here is that the eligibility just for the small and minority business enterprise certification is that your principal place of business must be in Connecticut. That is only for the certification process or receiving that designation. To do Connecticut contracting, you do not have to be headquartered here. You can still register with SAM and CT Source, and you can still get Connecticut contracts. Meg, would you like to add anything to that? No, that's perfect. That's exactly what I was going to say is that just what you said, you know, our, our you know, the Connecticut, you can do business and as Meredith said, register with CT Source, get your SAM registration. You would not, you would not be eligible for small minority set aside or certification. Okay. Our next question is, um, can a new business register or do you have to have done some business already before you can register? New businesses are welcome. Very good. Our next question is, can we have two uh, NICS codes? Our business provides graphic design for print and web design. Uh, does one code cover both? That's a great question as well. Um, I know we have a little extra time here. Would I be able to go into a live demonstration on maybe how to find your NAICS code? Uh, let's get to a number of questions. There's, there's okay. a lot in the stack. And then if we have a little bit of time, we'll let you, we'll let you okay. do that. Short okay. answer, yes. You can have as many NAICS codes as are relevant and applicable to your services. Okay. Our next question is, do any of these registrations trigger an IRS audit? I have nothing to hide, but I sure don't want to bring an audit on us. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, so no, you will not be audited by the IRS. However, when you go through the SAM registration process, you will need to provide your tax identifier, uh, whether it's your EIN or social security number, and SAM will be verifying that that um, tax ID matches up to the rest of your information that you've registered. So there is somewhat of an IRS validation, but not the same as an audit. Okay, um, our next question is, have any construction companies been denied during the application review process or disqualified later for labor tax or insurance violations? Meg, this one falls in your area. Yeah. Uh, no, because we wouldn't look at that, that they could be, um, you know, they could be disqualified or deemed not responsive at, 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 when they got the contract, but the certification would not be revoked for either one of those two criteria, right? Um, we do have another program called the Contractor construction pre-qualification program, which is a separate program um, that looks at some of those things for construction companies, but that's a that's a separate um, program. Happy to chat with whoever asked that question if they want to talk about that, but certification wouldn't be revoked or denied or anything because we don't look at that as part of the certification. Okay, um, another question regarding um, branch offices. If a company's main office is in New Jersey, and opens a branch office and registers in Connecticut, is the company eligible for Connecticut government contracts? So again, um, you do not have to be headquartered in Connecticut or even have a business in Connecticut to do government contracting. Um, however, you will not be eligible for the small minority business enterprise certification unless that is your principal headquarters. Correct. 
The only thing I will tell you is that I believe when you register with the Secretary of State here in Connecticut, you would have to fill out paperwork that says you have the authority to do business. And there's some commercial recordings you would have to file, but um, exactly what Meredith said, yep. Okay, our next question is, are there any contracts for IT staffing and IT consulting? Yes, many. Register for CT Source and for Connecticut, if you register in CT Source, you can filter and look at all those contracts that have been awarded and um, uh, opportunity bids that are either posted or will be posted with um, those types of, um, yeah, I, those types of services right now. Okay, another question from an entrepreneur who is a baker. Uh, are there opportunities for bakers who bake bread, cookies, and cakes as part of this program? Absolutely. There's opportunities across the state of Connecticut for just about anything that you do. So I encourage anyone, regardless of what kind of product or service you're offering, please sign up. Um, the registration just takes a minute and you will be notified for anything that falls under your product and services. Yeah, I, I, you know what? And let me just echo that because, uh, as I said, not only for the federal side, because Meredith can speak to that, and there's a lot of opportunities there, but even on the state side, remember, we procure for everything. So when you talk about bakering, you know, we have hospitals, we have correctional facilities, we have um, opportunities for um, subcontracting to some of our food service providers. So yes, there is opportunity. Okay, our next question. I plan to attend the um, SAM in-person workshop this afternoon. However, I have not registered for CT Source. I'm still working on my business plan. Does it need to be complete prior to registering for SAM and CT Source? No, and I'll, we will be there tonight. Um, I'll be there tonight. And no, you can do those simultaneously. Um, is there a New York APEX equivalent? If so, can you provide a website or phone number? Yes, yeah, so there is an APEX equivalent in every US state and um, territory. I will be putting the link to find the closest center to you in the chat right now. Okay. Okay, great, that just hit the chat. Okay, our next question, and they continue to come in fast and furious, so keep sending us the questions. Are K through 12 public schools required to use this small and minority owned portal to procure services? I do workshops with schools, but haven't noticed many opportunities for my services when I was registered in your portal in 2017. Yes, the quick answer is yes. and. Um... I would say shoot me an email and we'll see if we can drill down to see um, Department of Higher Ed, Department of Education has the same requirements. Um, so, yes. Okay. Our next question, are there any opportunities for services for IP attorneys? Yes. IT attorneys? In intellectual property attorneys. Oh, okay. Meredith? I would say um, that might be a, a little bit specific, but once again, um, sign up and see what's out there. You know, um, there's new opportunities coming through just about every day, so you never know what's going to come through. And if it's not through the state, I encourage you to sign up in SAM.gov, and there's federal opportunities for truly every product and service. So yes, you should find something somewhere. Um, our next question, uh, we are in art restoration. Do the contracts accepted always come down to the lowest price of the vendor bid? That's a great question as well. So the evaluation process on um, what is most important on a contract varies. Um, I will say that most of the time you will see that price and the best quality or um, value is put forward, but there's other um, evaluation factors that specific departments or agencies may be looking for. Um, for example, they may prioritize that you have past performance in this area instead of best price. So in exchange for raising your price a bit, if you have the past performance, that would be better on that contract. 
Okay, uh, next question. Do you have to register for the workshop taking place tonight? Yes, and I was told that there was 50 spots and about an hour ago I was told it was sold out. So uh, yes, but there's gonna be more. So um, just keep in touch and we'll let you know, we're gonna do these, they're gonna, there's, there's gonna be more, so. Okay, our next question, is it mandatory to apply for an IRS entity? I, I saw a fee of $277 to get my certification on BizNet. Um, so once again, all of these processes that we've mentioned are at no cost. You should not have to pay any fees for any part of this. Um, the IRS validation is part of the process of registering in SAM.gov for all awards, and you must be signed up for all awards to get the certification. So the answer is yes, you will need to sign up for all awards in SAM, which will include the IRS validation, but you will not have to pay a fee for either application. So it sounds like a consistent message of no fees. If you run into no. a website, exactly. Um, you're, exactly. you're in the wrong place. Yes, exactly. Do not pay for anything. Please do not. <laughs> okay. Our next question. What is the timeline of a typical bid process? I mean, I can I can take that. It you know, I know you don't want to hear this, but it depends. It depends if it's an RFP or a straight bid. We do reverse auctions. So it depends on the methodology of obtaining that contractor. Um, so it depends. Um, but by statute, you know, there's certain things we have to do at the state level where we have to post bids. So when you're register, you're going to see the bids that are out on that bid board. There's certain timelines they have to be posted for. It could be five days. It could be two weeks. It could be whatever. So all that plays into it. And then if it's an RFP, we have to evaluate if it's a straight bid, it's a little bit quicker, right? So it depends on the methodology um, of, of obtaining that. But um, the beauty of registering in CT sources, you can, you can kind of check out oh, okay, they, this one dropped off and it said it's under evaluation. So you can monitor that as a business owner. I can't speak to the federal side. Okay. It's, it's next, similar. The answer is still, it depends. Okay. Our next question, is there any opportunity for carrying uh, children school transportation? Yes, absolutely. I see those come through all the time for transportation. Um, next question, is the state required to acquire multiple bids for every project and does it depend on the service? Uh, it, it, again, it depends on the methodology, but the answer is yes, it always has to be competition. So we can't just we can't just give it to a company if there always has to be competition always. So there always has to be at least two, right? Um, but again, it depends on the methodology, right? We're, you know, reverse auctions are a little different, RFP, you know, so it depends. But quick answer is yes, we can't just give a contract to one individual. There has to be competition. Okay. So let us go. We had a number of questions of people asking for the, 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 the first three steps. Um, so Meg or Meredith, can you talk again? How do people get started? What are the first three steps? Um, I, I said earlier, register with CT Source. Register in SAM.gov. Register as a certified small minority owned businesses in that order. First, go to CT Source, register. Second, get your federal registration. Third, should you meet the eligibility requirements, get certified as a Connecticut small minority owned business. We're coming to uh, uh, to the end of this session. Up on the screen for everybody is Meg's uh, email address. Uh, Meredith, would you mind uh, just telling our audience what your email address is again? Absolutely. I'm going to put it in the chat now, but it's mglasgow at sector with an e dot org. Please reach out to me and I'd be happy to share my PowerPoint slides with you so that you can use my links and resources. And I encourage anyone to let me know if you would like assistance with this process and we can get you set up there. Also, whoever had the NAICS code question, please reach out to me and I can explain in more detail about the multiple NAICS codes. Thank you so much again. Okay.
Um, this session is being recorded. It will be available within 24 hours. Um, we will, um, you'll get an, an email um, following up on the registration. You'll also get a uh, survey uh, in terms of giving your feedback on the presentation. Uh, so there's lots of ways of getting this information back again. Um, so I wanted to thank Meg and Meredith um, very, very much um, for the extremely useful information that you provided. I'd like to uh, thank Diana Washington from the Southern Connecticut Black Chamber for being one of the, the key sponsors. Um, please check our website, fairfieldcounty.score.org for information on upcoming webinars, or if you're looking for a mentor to help you start or grow your business. Um, and on behalf of SCORE, I'd like to thank all of you for attending today's live workshop. And thank you all for the very, very dynamic uh, Q&A session that we had that really made this um, presentation uh, very, very worthwhile. So that concludes our session. And thank you very much. Thank you very much to everybody that participated. And on behalf of the chamber, I want to thank you also. Thank you very much, Diana. All right, that will conclude our session. Take care, thank everybody. Thank you so much, Peter. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.